Today we're headed off on the Carnival Splendor. Before we get there, I just want to say a quick shout out. Thank you very much to everyone that subscribed to my channel. I would really appreciate it if you could, if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you have any travel plans coming up, feel free to reach out to me at thecruiseandtravelguide.com.au where I can get you some great deals. Let's go. The Carnival Splendor is quite a large ship at 113,000 tons, so similar to some of the larger princess ships like the Ruby Princess. She was built in 2008 and has just undergone a multi-million dollar refit before coming down to Australia. One of the first things you will notice, as I did, was the pattern and colour usage on the ship and it extends throughout pretty much the whole ship. So I'm actually interested to know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments below. I know that a lot of people that are familiar with Carnival Cruises um, enjoy it, like it, and um, actually think it just adds to the whole feel. So I'm interested to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. We pass by the lobby bar on our way to the other side of the ship. The adventures desk is on our left here, which is where you can book shore excursions while you're on board. We'll be heading straight up to the Cloud9 Spa section of the ship. So this is an area that's positioned in the forward section of Deck 11. And what I'll show you now is actually private access area from those spa cabins up to the spa area. There is a spiral staircase and a glass elevator and that takes you straight up to the spa and the gym. We'll start by having a look at some of the thermal suite areas. So staying in the Cloud9 spa cabin, you actually get access to this area um, as part of your cruise. The first two passengers in the cabin do. Passengers three and four do not, but they can pay for access for the duration of the cruise if they like. So there's a series of grottos and rooms, steam chambers, heated beds, showers and all sorts of lovely things that you can um, unwind with while you're enjoying a day at sea. Continuing aft from the spa area, we come to the gym and the fitness class area. It's quite a sizable gym, so you'll find that there is plenty of room to spread out and enjoy a workout if that's your thing. Heading further aft, we actually emerge outdoors onto the deck and we reach Carnival Waterworks. This area received a massive update in the latest refit and it is certainly one of the draw cards for families on Carnival. And it includes two water slides, a splash zone, and some smaller slides as well. So it's a fantastic place to enjoy a hot day at sea.
heading further aft, we reach Splashy Cove. So Carnival have even thought about the little ones and this area is perfect for young kids in particular that might not be suitable for the Water Works Park. It's probably important to mention at this point as well that our tour guide did tell us to make sure that everyone knew that swim nappies are not allowed on board Carnival. Down on deck 10, we can see the series of what I have called sea pods. Um, I just made that up, but basically they look like an amazing place to enjoy a sea day um, with your maybe significant other or the family, but it looks very serene and peaceful and you can imagine enjoying a day at sea here in these beautiful pods. Again, heading further aft, we're going to actually enter the Lido Marketplace, but we're gonna walk straight through that at this point and head to Fahrenheit 555, which is one of the specialty restaurants on board, and it's a steakhouse, which apparently has fantastic food. Fahrenheit 555 does attract a surcharge for dining here, and it's quite easy to remember, it's $55 Australian. We were assured by our tour guide that no one will leave hungry and I'll take their word for it. I do have experience with specialty restaurants on board cruise ships and you'd never leave hungry, that's for sure. It's an intimate space and it's quite nice. Um, it has an open airy feel about it and this central area as well is quite nice in that it has a glass roof. You can also look down into the Lido Marketplace, which is the onboard buffet. So it's a three deck area and you can see straight through to the bottom. Heading down to deck 10, this is the upper level of the Lido Marketplace. And this actually has a barbecue or rotisserie section which is famous on Carnival. Some Australians will probably know that the Carnival Spirit had this area as well, but it was outdoors and so it was always subject to the prevailing weather. On Carnival Splendor, this is open all the time that the marketplace is open. Heading down to Deck 9, I'm now going to take you outdoors into the Serenity area. This is an adults only area, has its own pool, amazing lounges and a fantastic view aft. It's been beautifully designed with outdoor furnishings, it has a couple of whirlpool hot tubs as well and of course a bar. I think it's very easy to imagine yourself enjoying a day at sea here. It has a really great beach club feel with some nice background music and it's just all around a lovely spot. I think it's actually my favorite spot on the entire ship. Heading around to the other side of Serenity, we come across the bar area to your left, so you can see that there. And as we continue to walk through, we'll come to another couple of specialty eateries, but these are both included in your cruise fare. The first one of these is the deli. So this will provide you with a whole range of hot and cold dishes, salads, sandwiches, and it's a great spot um, that you can access whenever you're hungry and you don't have to pay a cent extra for it. You can also see this side of the bar, which is accessible to everyone, including children. Across the other side of the deck is Masala Tiger. So this was added in the dry dock and it is an Indian restaurant which has a range of delicious Indian specialty foods that I have to tell you smelled amazing when we were there that day. 
Once again, this is included in your cruise fare. So all you need to do is check the hours for both the Delhi and Masala Tiger, and then go and enjoy anything you like from there. From the back of deck nine, we walk forward and we enter the main area of the Lido marketplace. So this is the onboard buffet, as I mentioned earlier. It's a very spacious restaurant. It's quite large actually, uh, and it extends all the way through to midship. So you'll see as we walk through, it's quite long. There are many food stations. There's this one here at the back, which is the area that also leads up to the upper level where the barbecue section was. But continuing forward on deck nine, you see that we pass coffee machines, juice machines, and there is also a soft serve machine that anyone can go and use, and there's no charge for that as well. And we are told that it's another very popular feature in the carnival marketplace. The Mongolian walk section is in the middle of the Lido marketplace and this is an area where you can basically design your own stir fry. So you can pick your ingredients and they'll be cooked up in front of you. It's very popular as well. A carnival cruiser's staple is Guy's Burger Joint. So these burgers are known, well known for being amazing and they are included in your cruise fare as well. So feel free to hop on down whenever they're open and enjoy a Guy's Burger. On the opposite side, which unfortunately I didn't film, but there is a pizzeria that is open 24 hours a day. So you can go there at any time especially after a night of dancing, maybe, and get yourself a pizza. And in the middle of the ship, we have the Lido pool. So this is the main pool on board. It's for everyone, kids and adults alike. And it's also the location for the dive-in movies. The pool has a retractable roof, so this can be closed if the weather is bad. From the outer decks, we're going to go straight down to deck five. So deck five is actually one of the main public decks on board Carnival Splendor, and it contains a lot of the lounges and um, drink venues as well, and bars, cafes, etc. So we'll have a look starting with the aft in the El Morocco Lounge. So as per the name, this lounge is themed around the country of Morocco and you can see that in all of the amazing details with the furnishings and the decor and the design in general. During our inspection, it was actually being set up for a wedding, which is going to be taking place later that day. Moving out of the El Morocco lounge, we come across the Cool Lounge. So this lounge is actually being used in this case for the venue of the wedding reception. The Grand Piano Bar. So this is a carnival favorite as well. And you can see that the design really does maximize the whole piano theme. The motif hits you pretty much everywhere uh, and culminates with the central grand piano that you can sit around and enjoy the tunes that come from the piano player sitting in the middle. It's a large lounge and just look out for the hours of operation in your fun times on board Carnival and I'm sure that you'll have many a happy time there singing along probably to the piano man I'm guessing. Heading further forward along deck five, we come across the Alchemy Bar. So this bar is where you'll go for any weird and wonderful cocktail you can think of. They have a great range of gin and spirits and they can whip up anything you want. And this is the place to go to if you are, like many, a fan of the espresso martini.
The Red Carpet Club is the onboard nightclub. So it's got an expansive dance floor, a very large bar, lots of seating around, and it is the nighttime location on board Carnival Splendor. Our guide informed us that there's really no set closing time. It really just depends on the crowd on the ship. So if it keeps going, it keeps going. And if that means sunrise, that means sunrise. Heading next door to the warehouse, this is an arcade. So it's actually quite large and I'm sure that the kids will have a lot of fun in this space. Next door is the Java Blue Cafe. So this is a spot where you can grab some barista made coffees, some pastries, um, and just enjoy a morning cuppa. Club 02 is one of the teen locations, so as I've said earlier, Carnival really cater to families and children uh, of all ages very, very well. So this particular lounge is essentially a club for kids. Uh, between 15 and 17 years of age, they get to enjoy their own space with their own friends, uh, new and old, and it's a great space to hang out with games and dance floor and jukebox and all sorts of things that I'm sure that they'll have a ball playing with. Heading further forward, we come across the juice bar, Juice and Java. Next door to that is Cherry on Top. Cherry on Top is the onboard candy store. It was closed while we were visiting, uh, but I did get a little bit of a sneaky peek inside and it does look like a sugar rush heaven. The Royal Flush Casino onboard Carnival Splendor is massive. Um, it's actually one of the largest casinos that I've seen on a cruise ship and if gaming is your thing then I think you'll find a place here. There are slot machines, tables and electronic versions of table games as well. So there's plenty of choice for you to be able to have a flutter and hopefully have a win. The sports bar is located off the casino and in general will host and play all sorts of sports events as they're happening live depending on their satellite connection. So if they can, they will. It doesn't matter what time the event is on, they'll play it. Heading into midship on deck 5, we reach the fun shops. So this is just the upper level of the atrium, and it's where a lot of the shops are located that you can peruse while you're at sea, uh, and maybe find a few things to buy. Spectacular Spectacular is the name of the main theatre on board Carnival Splendor. It's a very large space and there really isn't a bad seat in the house. So you'll enjoy shows here, uh, game shows actually by Hasbro. So Carnival is, uh, has an association with them. Uh, and you'll see that a lot of the hard surfaces are covered in glitter. Don't be worried, it is sealed. It will not get on you or your clothing as I first thought it might. Because as we know, once you get glitter on you, it's there forever. Thank you. 
heading midship again, we reach the Splendor Atrium. So we'll head down to deck four and we'll continue our tour. Circle C is another teamed location uh, and it's basically an internet cafe, it has a few computers and it's another venue for teens to go and be able to enjoy themselves. On board Carnival Splendor there are two main dining rooms. The first one is the Black Pearl Restaurant and the second one is the Gold Pearl Restaurant. Carnival offer traditional dining with an early and a late seating and they also offer anytime dining. If you opt for anytime dining, as with other cruise lines, you'll basically need to go to the restaurant when you're ready to dine with your whole party there, tell the maitre d' how big your table size is and then they'll give you a buzzer and when your table is ready you'll be able to head back to the restaurant. Another carnival staple is the Red Frog Pub and this was added in the recent dry dock and it is a rather large space and it's definitely going to be one of the more popular nighttime venues. Carnival have also designed their own beer. It's actually brewed at the Rocks in Sydney and is apparently very nice so I suggest you give it a go when you're on board. The Golden Atrium is the entry point to the Gold Pearl main dining restaurant and it's where we're going to end our tour but not before we get a glimpse at what makes the Carnival Cruise Line so much fun. to know what you think about the Carnival Splendor. She's definitely a different ship in terms of her design. Um, not having been on a Carnival ship myself before, um, I was a little bit taken aback by the mixture of colors and uh, design inside. But I have heard from Carnival lovers that that's all just part of its charm. And the lady that took us around today on the tour also told us that the design is part of their unique attempt at making you feel like you're really anywhere else on the planet, which you definitely feel like you are. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Carnival is a really fantastic cruise line for families in particular, kids, they cater so well for families. If you haven't cruised before in particular, I think they're such a terrific cruise line to get started with. They really amplify the fun. They really want to make you feel like you are somewhere else and even down to the uh, dining room singing by the wait staff, which is apparently a carnival specialty. So I had a great day on board. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any travel plans coming up or you wanna plan something, just get in touch with me. I can get you some great deals, whether they're packages, cruises, land holidays, whatever it might be, head to the cruiseandtravelguide.com.au. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps me build the channel and do more videos for you. And um, if you haven't been following me on Instagram or Facebook, you can do that as well at The Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it and happy travels.